Hello there, my name is Rob Adamski. I'm the Wildlife Vet here at New England Wildlife Center. Today we're going to do a short educational session on rodenticide toxicosis or rodenticide poisoning in uh, our avian species or our bird species here at New England Wildlife Center. So what rodenticide poisoning is, it's a problem we're encountering with greater frequency here at New England Wildlife Center, both in our birds of prey as well as our scavenger species, such as crows and that sort of thing. And what we're experiencing is these animals are coming in after having been exposed to either prey items, such as other uh, rodents uh, or uh, squirrels or other animals that have been poisoned with some sort of rat poison or bait, okay? And what happens is our birds of prey take these animals because they're easy targets, because they're sick, and therefore unwittingly they actually get exposed to a poison that was not intended for them. Um, this rat poison or this poison we use is in common use throughout the country. It's used to control rodent or pest species that cause problems in warehouses, food uh, storage facilities, uh, restaurants, uh, farm sites, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, unfortunately though, there's a lot of collateral damage or side effects from the use of these poisons. Uh, from a wildlife and conservation standpoint, we have a lot of our raptor or birds of prey species uh, accidentally get poisoned as a result of it. And what happens is these poisons are designed to kill animals by preventing the clotting of blood. Now, the way that ends up killing these animals is, unfortunately, it's a pretty gruesome, horrible death. They end up bleeding out internally. So they end up suffering from shock and other uh, problems that end up killing them. And it's a pretty significant problem. To give you some kind of clue as to the prevalence of it, we're seeing between 50 to 75 percent of our birds of prey that are coming into the wildlife center as rehab cases are actually showing clinical signs that are suspicious for rodenticide poisoning. And they've done some studies recently where they found over 80 percent of raptors or birds of prey that they've tested have had some level of these rodenticides in their livers, which is pretty significant. Now, not all those cases are at a toxic level where it actually causes problems, but eventually these poisons will build up and they can either significantly impair the bird, like they'll make it weak, where it won't be able to hunt effectively, it won't be able to fly, and then it's gonna have problems, or it'll get to a point where it'll actually kill the bird outright. Now, what do we do for these birds when they actually come into the hospital? Well, the first thing we do is we need, since it is a poison, we need to counteract that poison. And what we use is vitamin K. All right? The way these poisons work from a physiologic standpoint is that they actually block this essential vitamin in your body. Uh, since vitamin K is an essential part of our clotting process, this poison actually binds to it and prevents the body from properly using vitamin K. So what we do is we give the animals vitamin K to overcome uh, the, you know, the pathologic or the bad effects of the poison. All right. Then what we do is we stabilize the animals by giving them uh, subcutaneous or fluids underneath the skin or if we have really severe life-threatening cases, we can actually go ahead and, and administer these fluids, either IV into the bird's veins, or what we call IO, or intraosseous, actually into their bones as well, which actually works just as well as any uh, IV medications. So we give these fluids to help stabilize them and prevent uh, signs like shock, for instance. All right, and then, so what we have is, so those are some of the common treatments we use for dealing with rodenticide cases. Now, overall, we have a pretty good success rate as far as treating these birds. The problem then becomes is that these animals require significant and long-term physical therapy, rehab, and supportive care before they can be released back out into the wild. 
Think of our raptors as Olympic athletes. These animals, red tail hawks, gray horned owls, uh, all need to be at the level, the physical ability level of an Olympic athlete just to be able to survive on a daily basis. They need to be able to fly, to hunt effectively, and all of that takes a considerable amount of time and effort and uh, resources on our part of the Wildlife Center to get these animals back into shape so they can be released successfully. Some of the things we need to do is we need to provide nutritional support. So a lot of times these animals come in, they're not eating. So we need to provide specialized diets for them. So we actually use, uh, this is just one example, we use a specialized carnivore care diet. And this is a hospital-based uh, diet we use for really sick birds of prey and other carnivores or animals that uh, eat, uh, need a large amount of protein. All right. And in addition to that, the animals also require significant use of our flight cage outside. So once they've recovered from the actual rodenticide poisoning, we then need to be able to get them back into physical shape all right, before they're released. So when they come out, it's like asking somebody who'd been in the hospital, uh, hospitalized in the ICU with a severe medical illness to go run a marathon. All right? Obviously, that person's not going to do really well. So what we need to do is we need to do a lot of physical therapy training uh, to get that bird back into great physical condition so that when we do release it, it'll be able to fly and hunt successfully to give it the best chance at survival. And that can often take weeks or even months. Right. We here at New England Wildlife Center view rodenticide poisoning as a huge and upcoming problem as far as uh, wildlife rehabilitation and wildlife conservation issues uh, currently go here in New England. Now, having said that, what do we recommend for you to do to de actually deal with rodent or like pest problems? Well, the eco-friendly way to do it would be to rely on the natural way, which is to go ahead and rely on our natural predators, okay? So you have the terrestrial mammals like fox, coyotes, uh, raccoons, all of them will eat uh, rodent or like pest animals. You can also rely on your birds of prey, all right? There, we have multiple different species of birds of prey or raptors here in New England that will effectively uh, prey on rodent and pest species to the point where they will literally, if you have like an average pair of gray horned owls, they will eat hundreds and hundreds of rodents per year, okay, and that will obviously put a significant dent in any rodent or like pest problem. So if you have good habitat and you create the right environment for our birds of prey and don't use these poisons, then we potentially uh, will see, uh, won't have a problem with uh, you know, rat poisoning and we won't have to deal with the uh, secondary accidental problems that we see with rodenticide use. Because not only are wildlife at risk, you also have domestic pets, dogs and cats are at risk, as well as children, okay? Uh, domestic pets and kids have all been found in certain cases to have been exposed to rodenticide poisoning as well. So there you go from the Wildlife Center, another educational session. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate you guys showing up.